Oh yeah, night vision is so cool. I hope this doesn't become my whole personality. So you've got a bunch of money burning a hole in your pocket and you want to be cool. You want to get into night vision. And if you do any amount of research, the first thing you're going to hear is that you should probably start out with a PVS-14 monocular. There's a reason for that. PVS-14s are affordable. They're still in active service with the U.S. military. There's a lot of upgrade components, replacement parts available for them. It's like a whole ecosystem. The PVS-14 platform has essentially become this sort of genericized design in the same way the AR-15 has for rifles. That being said, much like the AR-15 for rifles, the Chinese have very much moved into the market of cloning the PVS-14 as well. I thought it would be interesting to do a side-by-side -side comparison of a entirely Chinese-built PVS-14 clone unit, housing, glass, tube, everything, with a completely US-built mil-spec PVS-14 unit. So I have an NNVT-4 with a Lindu housing that I'm going to compare to a standard Omni-8 tube and a standard Carson Noctis housing. I wanted to do this because these are two very common starter units. They come in at a very similar price point to each other, and performance is surprisingly similar, and that's what I want to kind of show with this video. So let's take a look. So all this footage from here on out was recorded on a GoPro, so it's not ideal, but I think it gets the idea across. So the NNVT4, this is indoors. There's some ambient light coming in, but it's a very dark room overall. You've got a resolution of 64, which is pretty standard. SONR 23.4 for a total FOM of 1500. Those are actual values off of the spec sheet that came with this unit. I bought it brand new. Again, this is an NNVT4 tube with a Lindu housing, Lindu glass. That's all Chinese. Next, we're looking at an Omni 8. This thing is uh, Omni 8 tube, pretty clean as you can see, manual gain, so just straight US spec and a brand new Noctis housing, formerly uh, Carson. It's got Carson glass as well. So this is all US made, all US spec. I do have a white filter on it, which is why you get that coloring, but it gives a good idea of performance. Again, same room, same lighting. I took this right after the first one. And I think it gives you a good idea that they're pretty on par and the numbers show that. Now these next shots, again, all I'm really doing here is comparing the two of them like I was before, just in a mixed light setting. So I'm on the street, there's street lamps. This isn't the greatest test of performance. There's so much ambient light that any half decent, even a Gen 2 unit is going to perform hopefully totally fine out here again because of all the ambient light. But I think it's just a good comparison for quality, so you can kind of check out the halo, the glare, things like that. Now next we're gonna get into the garage. This is an actual extremely low light setting. There's almost no ambient light in my garage other than through the bottom there, and there's a little window on my door. But otherwise, you've got, like I said, no ambient light. So both of them performed all right. I do think that the Omni 8 had a slight edge over the NNVT4 in this scenario. But the NNVT4 did perform pretty admirably, but I think here's where the lower resolution and slightly lower gain is really noticed in these ultra low light settings. So again, here we've got the Omni 8, and I, I do think there's slightly better performance. Uh, you might notice a little bit of light coming off of the unit. Um, that's actually from the front of the GoPro. I think I had the display on, but I had that accidentally on for both of these comparisons. So it's still a fair comparison, even if they did have a little bit of ambient light coming off the camera, helping them out. So again, I hope this is helpful for you guys to really understand the difference between these two units and practical performance, what you're gonna see. So now we get into a comparison of the form factor of these two housings. As you can see, dimensions are essentially identical in all major areas. The only big visual difference is the manual gain knob versus the auto gain for the Lindu housing. When you hold the Lindu housing, you're gonna notice it's much lighter than the Carson housing. Believe it or not, the Carson housing that I'm holding right now weighs in at 350 grams, give or take, and the Lindu housing weighs in at only 250 grams. That is a 100 gram weight reduction that the Chinese were able to pull off somehow. I think part of how they were able to do it is using a CR123 where this US made Carson housing uses a standard AA battery. 
Make sure if you're running AA batteries in your stuff, you use lithium. If you leave an alkaline in for a long time, they have a tendency of corroding just like in your Game Boy Color when you were a kid. I've learned that the hard way multiple times. Learned that the hard way on a Neotech. Here we see standard uh, filter. That's a white light filter on the back there that threads in, no problemo. Not the same on the Lindu. So here quickly, I'm just showing how a J-arm fits on a standard housing. You see there's a slot on the J-arm that lines up into that slot. It's like an indexing slot on the housing itself. You screw it in with the thumb screw and you're gonna get nice and tight, no wobble. I'm showing this because, believe it or not, that indexing slot on the Lindu housing is reversed. You'll see that in a second. Lindu housings also use a proprietary thumb screw, so you're stuck making the stock thumb screw work with everything else. Now for the Lindu. It's lighter, that's the biggest advantage I would say. Um, it takes a CR123A uh, instead of a AA. It does have uh, a standard objective lens thread, so it'll fit your standard SAC lenses, your standard filters on the front on the objective lens. However, the ocular lens, the one that's near your eye, actually does not have any threads on the back. So again, this thing will not fit in here. It's just nothing, you're screwed. You can't put a D-mist on the back, you can't put anything, you're just stuck. Uh, the glass on these housings is proprietary, so that's something to keep in mind. Here I'm again opening them up, showing you the battery compartment. CR123A, that saves you a lot of weight. That's a better battery. Um, that is a great upgrade, nice little feature that is an advantage over the standard GI spec housing for sure. So another thing to note is if you look by my right thumb, the uh, locking ring for the ocular lens is very thin on these. So the one I have is thick because I actually had a custom metal ring put around it because the factory one cracked. That's a huge design flaw because it doesn't take standard locking rings. Here I'm showing you the J-arm. And again, this is super weird, but the detent for the J-arm is reversed. Yeah, it's reversed on these housings. It doesn't make any sense. So I had to take a Dremel and carve in a detent on the, on the correct side to get a standard J-arm to fit. That is super cursed. Yes, I did that. I didn't break it. Um, should I feel bad? Probably, yeah. So for the money, I do think you're getting a quality product with the Lindu housing. I've had a great experience with mine as far as reliability and performance, but I do not think it is quite good enough for prime time yet because of all of the proprietary design choices they made, right? You've got an issue with taking standard J-arms. You've got an issue with taking standard thumb screws for your J-arms. You've got proprietary glass, so you can't use <laughs> standard US mil spec glass. You've also got proprietary locking ring threads, which is also super goofy, and you cannot thread on a Demis shield or a color filter on your ocular lens. I think if Lindu can release a Gen 2 with the same quality, the same lightweight, and fix all of those goofy design choices, you're going to have a Chinese-made unit that'll be cheaper than the US equivalent, and it will absolutely cook, and I would recommend that unit.